let's express a little more generally that expression here. Okay, that expression here says, in certain words, that as I said, that the variation of the contents in a certain space point is due to the variation of the particle of the contents in the particle at this point minus the counterpart of the convective flux. Let's generalize a little bit more that. So now let's consider a property, certain property, A. And then the amount of the property per unit of mass, so what we call the specific contents of the property. And now we wonder, in this control volume, what is the amount or the, 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 the balance between the change of the contents of the property in this volume and the reasons for that. So this expresses the rate, the change per unit of time of the contents of the property at the fixed domain B at a certain time T. And here we said, well, what is this change due to? I'm just expanding what I say before. Well, first, the particles inside, the particles inside are generating property due to sources, for instance, the heat in a, re in a concrete uh, hardening process, okay? So imagine that the, pro the, the, the amount of the property that is generated per, uh, at, at, the, at the particles inside the domain can be expressed by a function. That is what we call the source term. It's expressed, let's call it K, a function of the space and times that expresses what is the amount of heat, for instance, that is generated due, due to the exothermic reaction of hardening in concrete at every particle. Okay? Let's assume that we know that. Okay. Now, of course, there are particles <coughs> that uh, live and enter at the domain. So there is some convective flux. And this convective flux is also responsible for an increase of a loss of the quantity. So these first two terms can be expressed here. If K is the amount of the property which is generated by the particles per unit of mass, by multiplying by rho, I have the amount per unit of volume, by summing, that is by integrating, we can obtain the amount of the total amount of the property that is generated by the particles inside the domain. Okay. That term here we already know. That is the term that expresses the amount that is lost due to convective flux. Okay? But this other term is also introduced here. He said, okay, the particles inside, the particles inside the volume are changing its amount by, by some sources, but they are also sending properties by non-convective transport to other particles. Okay? Imagine that I am a particle inside. I can send the, 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 the property by non-convective flux to send, or by non-convective transport, to another particle inside. Okay? This doesn't change the total amount. But imagine that you are a particle inside and you send by non-convective transport the, your property to particles that are outside, outside the domain. So this is a this is a loss. This is a loss for the content. So let's imagine that we know the, the responsible or, or the we can quantify the amount of the incoming flux or outgoing flux across the surface due to non-convective reasons by means, as I told you, a, a, a non-convective flux vector. Imagine that I know that. So that's a vector that integrated on the boundary provides the amount of property that gets out the, the, the domain by non-convective reasons. Okay? And now I include that term here. And now I set this equation. That expresses what is the variation of the contents of the property at the fixed uh, surf domain B. That expresses the variation of the contents of the property due to the sources. The particles inside, as they are inside of the, of the domain, they change their internal property, and this is their contribution. That's one. Then, the particles entering and leaving 
the boundary, the particles that are leaving the boundary, produce some loss or some increase of the property of the property because of convective transport. They are leaving, so they, they take out property, they enter, they introduce property. That is quantified in this convective flux. And now we can quantify what is the loss or the increase produced by non-convective transport. So that the one coming from particles inside sending property to particles outside. And this is represented by this term. Okay? So this is a generalization of the, of the Reynolds uh, transport theorem, but now a splitting, a splitting what are the reasons. So that's a generalization of that, but now a splitting of this, of this one, of this, no, this one, now exp uh, expressing in more detail what is the reason of the change of the particles, of the contents of the particles. Okay. Now, this can be also localized, can be operated by that. We just take this term to the other side, return that. We just take this derivative in that way, and then uh, we, we, we join this, we just apply the divergence theorem to this integral. So we replace j i times n by the, great, the divergence of j, which is here. So this term and this term become this. This term passes to the other side, become this. We apply also the, the uh, divergence theorem to this place. So finally, we obtain this equation. And we see that this, by the Reynolds theorem, can be expressed as rho d phi with respect to t. So finally, some analytical rearrangement says that the expression of the balance of the property inside the fixed domain dv can be expressed in that way, which are two volume integrals, and this should be hold either if this volume is that or even if the volume is a part of the, of the integral domain. So this, again, allows applying the localization principle. So what holds at the integral value, at the integral level, also holds point-wise for every point of the domain, which is that. And you know, that is the local form of the general balance principle that in global form says the rate of the change of the property in a volume is due to first one term, which is that, which is due to the change of the properties of the volume in particles. The second term that is due to the convective flux to the part of the particles. And the third, which is due to the non-convective flux of the particles. Now, we have this equation not at the, at the integral level, but at the local level. And now we can interpret that this term here, what is this term here? Well, in fact, is the rate of the change of the property per unit of volume in a certain particle. Okay? What is this term? Well, is the increase of this property, so that explains what is the, wh what is the reason for this increase. The first reason is that the property generates, the, the particle generates property. At the, the, the amount of this property that we generate by sources is Ka, that's for unit of mass, so multiplying by rho, we have per unit of volume, so that is the first reason for this increase. And the second reason is not that clear. Now we know, but we wouldn't like, we, 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 we didn't know before, now we know. Why? Because that expresses, that expresses, we know where this term comes from, comes of this convective term, non-convective transport. So this is the divergence of J expresses, and that's a way to understand it, why the particle loses property due to non-convective transport. The particle, I am a particle, now I'm a single particle, and I'm changing my contents of the property. I said that before. What are the reasons for that? First, that my sources generate property and, the, 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 at, 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 and this, this, this generation is quantified by this function. So this expresses the rate, the change of my contents of the property due to the sources. But then I'm sending properties to other, I'm sending properties to other particles by non-convective reasons. 
okay? By non-convective reasons. So how can I quantify at point level that quantity that I'm losing or gain, gaining by non-convective transfer? That is here, the divergence of these non-convective flux. In other words, if I know k and I know j, I can quantify what is the change per unit of time of the property per unit of mass uh, of, of, uh, in, in a given pattern. Example, and I will finish with that. Imagine that we have the property that I'm considering is the mass, okay? Okay. So what is the, the contents of mass per unit of mass? One, we said that. So phi is the uh, contents of mass per unit of mass is phi is equal to one. Okay. By the way, mass can be generated. I can, can I imagine that inside my basket, mass is generated. Mass, we said it doesn't change. Mass, mass cannot be generated. Well, it could be generated at velocities of the close to the light speed, you know, that the the, the, the relativity theory said that mass can be transformed in energy, but this only happens in the theory of relativity at, at, at extremely high speeds. But at low speeds, there is no mass generation. So the source uh, function is zero. Okay. Look, mass can be transported non-convectively. Mass can, can, mass can be transported by non-convective non uh, procedures? No. Mass is the only property, since mass is what defines the transport, so the mass cannot be transported to anyone. I cannot send my mass to the So j is equal to phi. phi. So this equation set rho d phi dt is rho zero minus dimensions of zero, so is zero. Okay? So that defines what? Well, that the contents of mass in a certain particle is always the same. That is saying, it's again saying that the mass cannot be changed in a, in, 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 even, even in a particle. But now we can just develop this equation using the Reynolds equation and see the, that equation can be expressed by that. Phi is equal to one, phi is equal to one. So finally we obtain that the derivative of the density with respect to t plus divergence of rho b is equal to zero. What is that? The continuity equation is one of the two ways these two equations are equivalent of the continuity equation. So again, we see that the expression that the mass of a single particle cannot change, which is doing that equal to zero, doing that equal to zero, is translated that into an equation which is nothing else than the famous continuity equation. 